Sweet baby ink is like a cockroach. It just survives seemingly everything, and everyone hates them because they're disgusting. Hey, what's up, guys? We're here. So today we're going to be once again talking about Sweet Baby Inc. We all know 2024 has been a very rough year for this woke consulting firm. And in yesterday's video, we covered the... Good. Good. I, wa I want more problems for them in the future, by the way. ...the latest developments involving them. And that is the fact that they nuked their own website and then rebuilt it, seemingly removing any mention of DEI from their website, which is a stark contrast to everything they've been doing for years. And a lot of people think this is their attempt... <laughs> to hide their agenda and to come off as just this simple uh, narrative consult. Well, yeah, kind of obvious, in fact. Anyone who thinks that is right. ...firm, and people think this is a recent shift, but thanks to some comments made by its CEO, Kim Belair, it seems that Sweet Baby has been trying to do this rebrand for a couple of months. And we can say that because of this sort of TED talk she did at XOXO Festival. Apparently this took place back in August of this year and it's been uploaded onto YouTube just two days ago on this channel. And in this sort of TED talk, she talks about not only a rebrand away from DEI, they're trying to come off as just this narrative consulting firm. She also tries to downplay all the criticism the company has been facing and tries to paint all of her critics as a bunch of conspiracy theorists and also she calls out a lot of YouTubers, including myself and Elon Musk as well. But there's a lot of interesting things she has to say, so... I love how Elon Musk just gets straight bullets because Twitter now can be used to actually, you know, express your opinion, how much you dislike these sort of things, and how you do not appreciate these people doing what they do. Because that's evil. Saying that is evil, you misogynist bigot. Oof. You're probably a Trump supporter also. How dare you? Ugh, oh, it's a never-ending story now, is it? So, let's give it a play. By day, uh, I am the crazed CEO of Sweet Baby Inc., the DEI-obsessed censorship mafia who is currently ruining and wokeifying all of the video games that you've ever played. Pretty accurate, yeah? Couldn't, say, couldn't have said it better myself, thank you. I mean, you said it, not me, but... You can hear the crowd, how confusing, right? Like she's trying to make a joke and downplay all the criticism, labeling these people as crazy conspiracy theorists, but then the crowd cheers. They cheer hearing about games being wokeified. Very interesting crowd attending this, and you'll see... Not really interesting in the slightest. This is exactly what you would expect. Uh, they're all, they're all integrated in all this woke nonsense. They cheer on this stuff. Thank you. Thank you, it's hard work. Um, if you haven't heard of Sweet Baby Inc., thank you. Uh, that's, that's actually how I prefer it. That's an interesting comment from Kim because it pretty much confirms mm. what a lot of people like myself have always thought, and that's the fact that Sweet Baby and its employees and its CEO, they never wanted to be discovered, and it's not about a... Yeah, they wanted to live in the shadows. ...vanity sort of thing. It's because they don't want people knowing their impact on games. No, Sweet Baby is not responsible for destroying every video game out there, but they are responsible. I mean, they're trying. They're giving their best foot forward in this, at least. ...responsible for helping damage a lot of games that have come out recently. Their staff has an uh, average 41% churn rate every five years, so it is, it is a struggle. We've seen many examples that Sweet Baby has been involved with that have ended up with bad products that end up tanking, and they don't want you to know the connections because once people started establishing uh, things like Sweet Baby Inc. detected, DEI detected, uh, services like that, it has been a very uh, eye-opening experience for people. Great things, by the way. People like Sweet Baby who have been working behind the scenes unquestioned for years and now they have a spotlight on them and they don't like it. And also, they don't like the spotlight on the people they're working with, too. We saw with the recent website rebrand, they removed their- They do like the spotlight on these people, because you know why? Because the client list is not meant for gamers. It's literally meant for like, oh, look at that, there's Valve, Ubisoft, and 2K, and Xbox games. And it's like, if you're Bethesda, you're like, shouldn't- we hire these guys because they they do stuff i i don't even know what this is how it's supposed to work you're, you're supposed to be a big gaming company you're supposed to look at this list because these lists are exclusively made not for consumers 
but for other companies, okay? That's that's how these companies figured out if something's legit and worth buying or not. It's the uh, it's the people who you have worked with. And if you're a gaming studio you're looking at Valve, Ubisoft, 2K, Xbox games, and all of this stuff, you're like, we should probably be here on this list. We don't even know what this company does. It's called Sweet Baby Inc., which is stupid. But we need to be on this list because everyone else is on this list. That is un... That is no joke how they, these things happen, by the way. This is literally what HR does. This is what advertising does. They, they just do stupid stuff. HR and advertising should not be allowed to... Well, they, they should not even exist in companies, honestly. Their client list. So they're trying to hide who they're working with. But unfortunately for them, we have archived screenshots like this. So it's a little too late to be playing that game. Um, but if you have, it's either because of the over 80 amazing and often award-winning games that we've worked on, or actually one of those, Usual June, was at this very conference. So yeah, you've, you've either heard it, us from all of these wonderful games, or perhaps you're familiar with the nearly year-long hate campaign that has been... Oh, look at that. Man, there's so much here. There's Gundam. There's the guy with the accent. I don't know what this is. There is so, 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 so much here. Vera Dark, Mommy. Again, it's a Gundam. Saw this video. Don't know what this is. Asmongold, I think. Or someone using Asmongold. More stuff like that. Jesus. There's there's a lot of people disliking this. Can't blame them. ...been weighted against us as a team. Oh, Very that young, was guys. us. And that was up echelon. Right here, I'm up on the Jumbotron. I made the, the compilation. So she is using this image to call out people who are criticizing Sweet Baby. And the irony, of course, is the actual video that she used for me is citing something that she's not going to mention throughout this TED Talk. But we'll get there in a second. Turns out this image is actually not hers. In fact, its intention is the exact opposite of what she's doing. This is actually... The source right here. This is the individual who made this image. It wasn't made to dunk on or expose people criticizing Sweet Baby. It was literally made to show all of the criticism they are facing. So Sweet Baby couldn't even be bothered, or the channel who uploaded this, they couldn't even be bothered. You know what's crazy about this? This guy who made this, you can't probably find this picture if you just Google it. You specifically need to look for it and save it to most likely have it because this is not something Google is going to find. To make these sort of compilations themselves. But clearly, they're aware of all this stuff. And on top of that, like I said, at no point during any of this TED Talk is she going to mention the reason this all happened. She's talking about the harassment campaign and at no point will she ever cite the reason it actually happened. It started because of this right here. Chris Kindred, one of their employees. I don't even actually honestly care why any of this started. I just know that we need to end it and know how it needs to end. Starting a harassment campaign, a false flag campaign against Cabrutus, who created Sweet oh, Baby yeah. Inc. Detected, and we know the story of this, the Streisand effect, that small steam group would blow up as a result of this, and then the criticism campaign against sweet baby would ramp up to levels nobody ever thought and they only have themselves to thank for that because of the actions of chris kindred and just like the journalists who have covered this situation they intentionally omit this entire interaction that led to the public the really public discovery of sweet baby and what they're doing you're familiar with the nearly year-long hate campaign that has been waged against us as a team no. Unfortunately, today I'm here to talk about that in a talk I'm going to call What Happens When You Get Harassed? A Sweet Baby Story. Amazing. Definitely from a group of people like it's Sweet Baby and a lot of these activists. They love to play the victim any chance they get. And they're going to basically try to... Victimhood is a currency, and the one who controls most of it is reaping a lot of benefits nowadays. Frame this entire thing to a bunch of people in the audience who have no idea what's going on. They're just being spoon-fed whatever Kim's saying. And she paints this whole thing as a one-sided harassment campaign because people hate woke stuff, and they're just going rabid on this poor, innocent narrative consulting firm who has no woke agenda whatsoever. But let's uh, allow this to keep playing. 
So I'm going to start at the beginning. Who is Sweet Baby Inc? Um, we are a narrative development company, and we are a team of narrative developers. Uh, what that means is that we do script writing, storytelling, narrative work for video games, and sometimes that means that we come in for writing punch-ups. Sometimes that means we're the entire writer's room for a project. Sometimes that means we're coming in very, very, that is crazy. very early on and helping them start the groundwork, the world building. Um, yeah, that's kind of uh, scary to think about, right? Sweet Baby being the entire writer's room at some point, uh, at some project. I mean, it did happen. And by, by the way, this is also something that they are trying to lie and say doesn't happen, which is, which is crazy. They're, they're trying to say, oh, we Sweet Baby, we, we, get, we get hired to be consultants and nothing really happens. We just get paid, but we don't really do anything. This was one of the things that they tried to lie about, which is completely insane, obviously. That's a pretty uh, terrifying thought, but you can see what Kim's saying, right? She's describing yeah. Sweet Baby as a narrative consulting firm who helps build stories for these various clients. However, we know truly that this isn't as simple as she is suggesting, okay? Uh, this is a comparison of the About section from only a little while ago versus the revamped one from the website's uh, recent changes. You can see how much they are trying to cover up their woke agenda. Here's the original about us saying founded in 2018 Sweet Baby Inc. is a narrative development and consultation studio based in Montreal and working around the globe. Our mission is to tell better, more empathetic stories while diversifying and enriching the video game industry. We aim to make games more engaging, more fun, more meaningful, and more inclusive for everyone. Then you can see the updated statement. There is no mention of inclusivity diversity, anything like that. And that is reflected in how she is speaking during this TED Talk. She is not mentioning anything about DEI or a woke agenda in her description of her company because I think at this point, she knows it is a crutch. It is something that is turning off a lot of people to anything they're working on. And really, why would anyone want to be a so- Do you think the rebranding is gonna work? It's really hard to say, honestly. I think it's a 50-50 associate with sweet baby and their agenda at this point so i think they're doing everything in their power to and i mean by rebranding not the fact that we are going to forget what sweet baby is that's not happening but the fact that they're going to get uh you know a new uh new people to hire them to do you know game destruction shit sort of clean up their image but as always it's a little too late right they're trying to paint themselves as a non-di non-woke not even involved in any sort of stuff like that. They're just a narrative consulting firm. When only a year ago, you have employees from their company making slideshows like this onto YouTube saying that, Oh yes, we watched it. They want to destroy the gaming industry. Very cool. <laughs> oh, they're kind of succeeding to a degree though. They want to burn the games industry to the ground. That was their objective at Sweet Baby. And now, they expect you to sit here and just think, yeah, yeah, they're totally not uh, having any sort of an agenda behind the scenes. Uh, nobody with a brain is buying this right now. But what I want to really stress is that all of our work focuses very heavily and very seriously on story. That is what narrative development is. Um, we started out in 2018, but it was really in 2020 that we kind of came to any kind of uh, industry prominence. And it was on a backdrop of the COVID quarantine sending everybody home from the office. Um, Me Too sweeping through the games industry as various bad actors were named and shamed uh, appropriately, I should say. Uh, and also the Black Lives Matter protests were in full swing. And you can see the things she- How, how does many of that ma matter? I don't even know. He's mentioning right there. Oh, I know, wait, I'm an idiot, because those things are things that destroy society. Very cool. It's kind of the blow up of Sweet Baby. It's not about narrative consulting, it's about social Politics. issues. They're talking about Black signaling. Lives Matter. They're talking about the Me Too movement. Why would they, as just a regular narrative consultation group, blow up as a result of stuff like that? It's because they were pandering to a lot of social issues, social justice issues, things like that. And it happened to be a good fit at the time where a lot of corporations were going absolutely crazy, trying everything in their power to appeal to a bunch of activists because they thought that would help their bottom line. And as it turns out, that didn't really work. Um, at the time, the industry was kind of responding in the way you might imagine with a lot of you know, corporate overpromising, but 
within the writing sphere, there were a lot of uh, offers for portfolio reviews. Like, hey, if, if you're a, a marginalized or especially a black dev, we would love to give you a portfolio review. And I want to say I love portfolio reviews. It's something that we also do at Sweet Baby for free. So she goes on to talk about how uh, she likes to give a helping hand to a lot of people. Why would they need a portfolio review, though? Who are marginalized and they don't get a, a regular shot. And this reflects their original outreach statement that has been removed in the revamp of their website where they say new and marginalized talent can change the industry if given the proper support. We want to provide this through our outreach programs. And in another interview from a few years ago, Kim talked about the same thing and basically said that she wants to hire people who are minorities, even if they don't have the qualifications. She thinks that is a more important uh, factor towards their employment than their actual writing skills and things like that. So it really all goes back to a lot of their original goals. She's just wording things differently. But let's watch some more here. I decided to do a cheeky Google and see like, hey, can anyone uh, put that together? Uh, the Google went bad. So what she's referring to here, by the way, just for context, is she was releasing, she was helping release two major projects Sweet Baby worked on, that is Alan Wake 2, and Spider-Man 2, and she decided- Both financial flops, very cool. Decided to Google search herself, basically to uh, get a little insight on how excited people are to see Sweet Baby's involvement, and wow, who, who would have thought it turned out bad? And I, I shouldn't have done it because um, rather than, you know, any praise or people going, wow, how did you do it? Or just, hey, a narrative development company, what does that mean? I'm really interested. We were instead found by kind of, you know, 4chan and the worst people on Twitter. And looking back, there is a funny element to it where I go like, people were kind of talking like, I've discovered a secret Canadian company. Like, these are the guys who did it. And the discovery that they had made was actually like our public facing website. So you see her talking there about 4chan in the worst of Twitter. So she's trying to, once again, downplay the criticism she is facing. It's not from people making... Well, of course they're not going to take any criticism to heart. All of this criticism is just a bad fate evilness that, you know, no one should take, uh, take, uh, take into account because they're bad people and they should probably deserve to be uh, put in camps and whatnot. That's their probable unironic way, way of looking at these things. But yeah, man, pretty funny. <laughs> oh, sweet baby Inc. Never stop creating this great entertainment for us, you bunch of losers. Anyway, have a nice day. That was Rev. Ha have a nice day. Bye.